Hello. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Wolf Den, live from our new set. And this is episode 66, the one where we kill all the Jedi. Now, here's the thing. Today, we got a new set. Yes. We're also streaming in 1080 for the first time ever. Yeah, so there will be problems. I so already with us. see frame drops. Yeah. I'm witnessing it as we speak. So, there is pretty much nothing we could do about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, because we already started the stream. So... We're just going to hope that it eventually fixes itself. We'll give it about like 10 minutes or so, yeah. and we'll see what happens. So I'm sorry for that. But this is the new set. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been working very hard, and by we, I mean me. I was fine with All the old me. Set. <laughs> You're also fine with mediocrity. I am. I, I like by. to push things a little bit. Don't rock the boat. We have exciting things to do today. Hello, Thunder God, Christian, Jason Todd. This might run a little late, Will. Just letting right. you know. Uh, Christian, Doc, AJ, if I already said that, Richard Powell, hello, 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 Atten, hello, Anthony Pacini? The very same. Look at that. He likes the plant. Nice. This is very not real. No. Uh, no, Will is... pointed out to me before we started that the top shelf is, uh, the collection of what, Will? Um, these are all given to us by ex-girlfriends. <laughs> Everyone, a Everyone. different, a different ex-girlfriend. Yes. And In I fact, there's only that. one thing on this shelf given to us by a current girlfriend, and that is Slimer over here. Which he brought down before we started, just, just, to, make sure just to make sure that it was... That at least one, one person we are currently dating, and by we I mean I, is, uh, is represented. So that's how, that's how you marry girls. That's how you marry dudes, girls. Get them Slimer. So right off the bat, I want to start... Uh, but in our old set, we had a wall of Amiibos. Yes. They were all in their package. Yes. There is no reason for them to be in their packages anymore. No. I've... I don't want them in the packages. So we're going to... Oh, I... Uh, I just ruined the set. Right now. <laughs> Got... Christmas has come. Yay. So what we're going to do... Th now, don't get used to this, but we have yes, multi-cam. Yes, <laughs> uh, This is not going to stay. Will. Yes. Help. Okay. Mega Man. Uh, let's try our best to keep this as entertaining as possible yes. for our podcast listeners. As I'm opening up Mega Man, I think now is a good time to talk about... I also about... got Star Fox. Did you see um, the new Mega Man cartoon? At least the shot of it. No, I did not. Um, all right, I'll put that in the keep so that you can look at that. Uh, so there's going to be a new Mega Man cartoon. They Sorry. kind of they kind of already like talked about this before. There was a big controversy because he looks weird. I don't think it looks that weird. It's coming to Cartoon Network. He's going to be all hip and modern. Um, it's going to be like sort of a... His name's not going to be Ooh, Rock. Oh, I got Marth. His name's not Rock. His name is Aki Light. Oh, he's a dude. He's a he's dude. He's like a dude. Yeah. Or is he Or is he a, an android? What is it? In this Cartoon Network cartoon, the Blue Bomber is actually a preteen robot boy named Aki Light fighting in the high-tech Silicon Valley. Although oh. Superman and other superheroes, Aki spends half his time trying to be a typical robot boy and the other half... Living it up as a powerful fighter. So this is a departure from the classic Mega Man we know. You put it in the keep? I put it in the keep. It's okay. a departure in that Mega Man is just Mega Man. That's it. It's no dual identity. No, none of this, um, you know. Oh, wow. I'm really this person. I remember this identity. looking worse. Yeah, I think the first image that they put out was like really because this uh, this actually looks pretty good. Yeah. This almost looks like the toy that I have. That looks like a, what a modern Mega Man should look like. I like I kind of like that. Yeah. Do they have a picture of the original? Because the original did not look like that. Um, one of those links I think has to have. Return to TV. Let's see this link here. No. No, that's not it. No, I don't know. That looked that looked pretty good to me. Yeah. I'm opening up uh, Little Mac. Ooh, you you got the retro Mario too. Yeah. I got myself the golden Mario, which is probably worth a lot of money. Yeah. And here I am. Here just I am. Just ripping it open. So much of this that's actually worth money. That we are just destroying. Now Justin Colley, our good friend from the UK. Yes. Sent us uh, some amiibos, which. Yes. We didn't get yet. We never got those, yeah. Well, they're they're here in America, but they're in a P.O. box, which is unavailable to us right now. <laughs> because of that, because of that absolute shit show yeah. right there in the dock, yeah, right. Uh, um, we got ourselves our own P.O. box. Yeah. 
So now, if you ever want to send us anything, please only send us consumables. <laughs> Keep the toys to a minimum. But the P.O. box is in the description of this video. And now you can send us stuff, and we'll yeah. unbox it on air, live, in front of everybody. I really like this Ganon. This Ganon is very detailed. It's a Twilight Princess-based Ganon, I believe. Now, all of these, every single one of these, can go right into Breath of the Wild. Oh, yeah, that's right. And most of them just give me little pieces of steak. <laughs> that's really all you need. Oh, there, I didn't know they made a dark pit. They sure did. Well, now you can get your greasy hands all over it. Nice. I actually did want a regular pit, but I gave up on that. So maybe oh, I'll just steal yours. This is, uh, this is for you, Will, right here. This is, you've been waiting yes, for this moment. Yes, I have. But here's the catch, though. So that's the three pack. This is the three pack of uh, the classic characters. You have the Duck Hunt Dog, Mr. Game and Watch, and Rob the Robot. Um, NES colored Rob the Robot. Now uh, let me tell you why you can't have any of those. Why not? Because Justin is sending you one. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, that's good because I was just gonna, I was just gonna display uh, Duck Hunt Dog, and the rest can fuck right off. Oh, you see my big bald head right now. Where's the other Rob? Oh, here you go. So there's another Rob the Robot. Yeah, that's uh, Famicom colors, I believe. Yes, these, this is the Famicom color yeah. one. So this you can only get individually. Yes. That only came it, in three pack. It was very difficult to get them outside of the three pack. And you, for yeah. some reason, were like, Jet set on getting the Duck Hunt dog. Yeah, because I only pack. care about the Duck Hunt dog. Now, the cool thing about Rob, though, is he comes with all these different um, versions. Not the. Who the hell is this guy? Mr. Game and Watch. I did not know this. Yeah. So. Game and Watch you can only get in the three pack, I assume. Yeah. If he comes with this many different yeah. versions, now how the hell are we gonna display that? I don't know. That's your problem. Those are going in the drawer. What's the best one? Which one's the best? I one? mean, that's the default one. I mean, if you want to do something, yeah, I guess the default one. These are yeah. going in the drawer. Ryu, and never to be seen again. I kind of want Ryu, but I promise myself that Hunt Dog is the last. You know, for all those Nintendo games that featured. For you after the Super Nintendo came out. Yes. So now, are you going to get the rest when they come out? Like Bayonetta and... No. no. Probably not. Unless they're, like, really cool. Right. Now, the Villager is probably... No, wait. There's two different there's types two different of Villagers, kinds, apparently. I think you got the second one, right? I, yeah, this is the second yeah. wave. So this one's probably not worth anything. However, uh, I do have... This is probably worth the most out of any of these. The Wii Fit Train. Oh, yeah. The Wii the Fit Train. The box is banged up, so... The box is banged up. Oh, no. We we were forced to open it. There's a lot more here than I expected. We uh now I titled this that they're all Smash Amiibos. Right. Like ninety percent Smash Amiibos. Yeah, I mean those are the amiibos that matter anyway. Captain Falco here. Captain Falco, I said. <laughs> that is not his name. The gold Mega Man. I've been wanting you to oh, take this out of the box for years. I lied. That's probably worth the most out of any of these. Why would this? This came with games. It came with the collector's edition. Only the really? Of the Legacy Collection. Oh, so wow. that's very exclusive. Oh. So rip it out. Get your greasy hands all over it. Ruin it. Just because the box is terrible. Yep. This, we ha I have two of. So if you nice. want this, you can actually have I might, I might have to thank you. No, I've ever played Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight. This is like one of the best ones. I What's think. interesting about this is the one of the Shovel best Knight looking one. amiibos. What's interesting about the Shovel Knight one is all these other ones, all these official Nintendo ones, have like this little me metallic thing in the box so that you can't scan it in the box. The Shovel Knight one doesn't have it, Ooh. so you can just scan it right from the box. Don't have to take it out. What else do we got here? Ike. This one. I was stoked for because I love Ike. Zero Suit Samus. I used to main Ike along with Cap Captain Falcon. Zero Suit Samus and her high heels for some reason. And her great ass. It's a very, 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 very nice ass. I think there's one more in there. Toad. Toad is the only Mario Party one I got besides the gold Mario. Yeah. And modern 8-bit uh, I like that one. Yeah, that's a good one. Is that it? I, yeah, that's it. Oh, no. Oh, yes. That is it. Now we just have a whole bunch of boxes laying here. Yeah, good luck with that. Well, that, that wasn't as long as I expected. Nope. Hope we have stories. To talk Where's about Pikachu, now. Common Boy says? Uh, not here, because screw him. He yeah. was, like, super, like, easy to get. Now, I, wanted, I was going to put this here, but I feel like I can't now, because that's the only modern girlfriend shelf. 
Uh, now we'll add these. Mm-hmm. Which one's your favorite? Hmm. I'm probably gonna say Duck Hunt Dog. I mean, it's, it's up there. I really like Duck Hunt Dog. These are all like made really well. Yeah, they're all very well designed. They're all very well. Put the only together. one I didn't like was Yoshi. He had a weird seam in him, which is why I, he's not here. I have Yoshi up there. I didn't re- realize the seam. Donkey Kong is true. It's weird because a lot of backpack is sick. A lot of the first wave ones have like these plastic things holding them in. So like it really distracts. Right. Yeah. Especially Link. His is like pea yellow. Yeah, I have him over there. Yeah. I don't have him here. His sword is a little bent. Uh oh. This is also the second one I have. I have a bunch more over there that are yeah. already out. I had ones like the ones that I really liked, I had I have them I have some that I took out and some that I left in the box. And now it's kinda of worthless. Yeah. So I guess we could put actually we could put these in front of the uh the stuffed animals over there. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, I mean, yeah they are. I don't know. I like I like these. Yeah, those are cool. These are cool. Did, did they make a link one? They did. He has a weird nose. Really? They shouldn't have given him a nose. <laughs> it's really bizarre mm. looking. Uh but he's cool. I would get that. And I think that gives you special stuff in Breath of the Wild. Probably. I, all of these you can put in Breath of the Wild and get like stupid meats and stuff, but some of them give you outfits. Like the Link one, the Link amiibo gave me Epona. Really? Which was very cool. Yeah. I use him all of the time. Her. Her. Whatever. Uh, but you can use the amiibos once a day. Now I have so many amiibos. Yeah. So now, like every play session, or before I do a dungeon or something, I'm just gonna load up. Yeah. You know. I'm just gonna friggin' load up on meats and then yeah. cook them. All right. So I guess we're done with that. These yeah. are just gonna sit here for the rest of the show until I. After, then I'm gonna put them all on the shelf. What, what's the chat talking about? Anything? Where's Pikachu? I see again. Uh, where's Charizard? I have a Charizard. It's in my room. Mm. Prominently displayed. Now, does, now I feel weird. Now, do I have to get all of them now? Uh, Did I screw myself? No, you, you didn't <laughs> screw yourself. You, you, get, you get the ones you want to get. That's how I feel about collecting. You know, you're not even going to see them anyway. So The, prob- the problem is because if you, if you go down that rabbit hole of you know trying to get everything you're never going to be happy you're absolutely I right. i do the same thing with star wars black figures i only get the ones i want to get you are absolutely right. problem is most of the ones i want to get are also the ones everybody wants to get so it's sold out <laughs> the only one i regret not getting is slave leia because now that's hard to find when that used to be the most common one yeah i remember seeing that all the yeah. time there's some cool ones now oh yeah i saw a couple yeah at like best buy all <laughs> things they're like in the front of the store i got my obi-wan kenobi black series figures at walgreens of Jesus. All places. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, I thought this was going to take like the whole show, but <laughs> we do have a lot to talk about. We do. Um, blah 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 blah. Well, while we're on Nintendo, I don't think there is any Nintendo news. Did I just lie? Yep. Well, why don't we talk about this? So you know how Nintendo has that whole thing where they're, like, super strict on copyright. Yes. If you post something on YouTube or if you stream on Twitch, they will strike you. Yes. For seemingly no reason. Yes. Uh, very. They're a lot more strict than other uh, game, game companies. Yes. Well, now you can add Atlas to that list. Good, because that was one of the only topics I had. <laughs> I have a lot. There's a lot to talk about. All right. Atlas... Threatens Persona 5 streamers with suspension. Yes. Um, do you have their actual note? Because I have it up. Uh, I have it in an article. You can read it if you want. Okay. Um, let me just see if I can get the highlights. All right. So Persona 5 came out, and everybody wants to stream it and stuff. And Atlas pretty much says that, yes, you can. However, there are, there is a limit to what you can and can't stream. And according to them, the limit lasts until July 7th. Which, which is insane. Which is quite the time. Um, you, can, you can post however many additional videos you like, but please limit each to, at most, 90 minutes long. That, nope. Which is nothing yeah. for a streamer. That's, like, barely that even, nothing. Yeah. No major story spoilers, obviously, and I'll leave that up to your good judgment. 
If you need some guidelines, avoid showing slash spoiling the ending segments of the first three pa- uh, first three palaces. While you can show initial interactions and while you can show in it, sorry, while you can show take, take time, initial interactions with Yusuke, I believe that's how you pronounce that name. Avoid his awakening scene and that whole deal about the painting. The is in capital letters. <laughs> also, don't post anything about a certain student investigator. I know I mentioned not showing the ending of each palace, but you can grab footage from the Kamoshida boss fight. However, do not capture video from the other major boss fights. You must not focus only on cutscene. Animated scenes sh- uh, should predominantly feature drag. Uh, sorry, should predominantly feature dungeon crawling, spending time in Tokyo. You can post straight gameplay or have commentary. Uh, streaming content. This is a Japanese title with a single player story means our masters in Japan are very wa- very wary about it. Streaming is currently blocked through the native PS4 UI. However, if you do plan on streaming, video guidelines uh, the video guidelines above apply except length. If you do decide to stream past July 7th, I highly recommend not doing this. You have been warned. <laughs> <It's just laughs> and, and that's in all caps. <laughs> You do so at the risk of being issued a content ID claim or worse, a channel strike or account suspension. That being said, uh, Persona 5 is a super special case for us, and we're in ongoing discussions about our future policies. That, that, like, I thought EA had a strict embargo on Mass Effect. Yeah. That is insane. Yeah. Because EA was like, you can stream or record content, like... On the 14th, you can start uh, releasing the first three planets, but not this planet, only a little bit of this planet. But then on the 16th, you can start talking about that planet. And then on on launch day, you can go out. But don't say anything about the ending until 24 hours after it launches. I like, that was... I thought that was a Now, lot. that's common, but that's common practice, though, because right. when publishers... That was before the game came out. Right. When publishers give out games before the game is out, like, they do ask, you know, for certain guys. It's more of, like... You know, you have the privilege of getting a game early, so they, they just ask you, do them this favor, don't post this, this, and this, and this. But usually once the game is launched, or like 24 hours after it's launched, it doesn't matter. It's out in the wild, you can do whatever you want. This is clearly stating that even though it's out in the wild, we don't want you doing anything with it. Yeah, that's messed up. Yeah. Is that they don't want anybody doing anything. Yeah. It's not like a pre-release or anything. That's messed up. Now, here's the thing. I, it is kind of crappy to... uh to like put up story spoilers yeah that's i understand where they're coming from but you can't stop people from i would like to just correct myself i thought that seven seven meant july 7th seven seven is a part in the game ah yes yes, so uh, i remember reading that right so you cannot stream anything past the seven seven mark in the game Mm. if you do atlas will come at you right now, uh, I was watching Jim Sterling's video on this, like actually just before we started filming. Love him. Uh, Great guy. He said pretty much everything we're saying. Atlas is a Japanese-owned company. They're owned by Sega, which has had their own run-ins with streamers in the past. Uh, Konami is notorious for issuing copyright strikes and takedowns and things like that. I didn't know this. Yes. And Nintendo, of course, is the famous one. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought it was really mostly yeah. Nintendo. It, it seems to be that... Um, I mean, I don't want to say all Japanese publishers do this because it's not all of them, but it seems to be that the, the Japanese game industry is slow to adapt the ch- the changing market of streamers and YouTubers um, who do get games sometimes early and put the, and put content up online for everybody to see. Right. That's one of the reasons why Sakurai didn't put a single player mode in Smash Brothers for the Wii U was because everybody just streamed Subspace Emissary from Brawl and just watched that, didn't bother playing it. So right. They have a very different view of like this type of culture over there. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wonder how the Japanese are taking it, because I wonder if they're just like, oh no, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll listen to you. I, I don't know. Like here, we're like, no, you're the man, and you're we gotta stick it to you. Yeah. You know. It, it, it is it is strange because it's your stream. You should be able to do whatever you yeah. want with the game that you just bought. Yeah. Uh, I know Devolver Digital has on their page, on their like their very Q page, it's like, can can we stream your content or put your content on YouTube? And in big capital letters, yes. And then right underneath, if you need written permission, just email us here. Yeah, well, that's the way to do it. Yeah, you should be allowed to do whatever you want. Yeah. 
uh, like I understand some games that are strictly like story driven games. Yeah. Like being a little weird about it, but you can't say you can't like be like you have been warned, don't do this. Yeah. No, you can't do that. I, I mean, in all fairness to Atlas, like this is their content. This is their copyrighted content. They do have a claim in it. However, what streamers and YouTubers are doing, you know, is it goes beyond certain copyright laws because it's for re- it's for review. Like that's covered under free speech. Um, parody is covered under free speech. Uh, transformative media. You know, if you're do- doing something else with it, like adding your commentary or something else, like all there are all these little things that like let you bypass standard copyright law. Right. But a lot of slow moving companies like Atlas and like Nintendo. Yo can't see past that. Yeah, it's 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 dumb. They handled it very poorly. I could see where they're coming from, but they should have worded it differently. Mm-hmm. But again, it is coming from a Japanese company. They, they I, I, I'm curious to see what they, how they react in Japan, because they, this might be the norm. Yeah. You know? So what you guys think in the chat? Uh, Richard Powell, streaming content should be covered by fair use because it is transformative. Each gaming session is a different thing, and you are providing commentary. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But it, it's just that, like, there was a problem with, like, your dragon cancer. Yeah. That was, like, a big problem because people weren't buying the game. They were just watching streams. Right. But that was a narrative game. Yeah. I think it's up... I think it's the streamer's problem to uh judge whether or not they should be streaming the game or not yeah you know? or like because something like your dragon cancer you should stream like an hour of it maybe and then stop yeah. like leave the ending so that people want to buy it because that's an indie game the guy's not making a lot of money yeah he's not paying you to do that and uh you want people to want to play the game mm-hmm. something like life is strange that's another one i wouldn't want to stream the whole thing Tell, then people are going to buy it. Telltale, um, Jason Todd says, Telltale lets you put the entire episode up. Atlas should not have a problem, which Telltale does. Like, they don't yeah. really... But that's another thing. Like, t- Telltale can't stop you from doing it, but you shouldn't. I don't think streamers should <laughs> right. do all of the episodes, you know? Right. Like, I think they should stop after a few episodes and be like, mm-hmm. you figure it out yourself because you shouldn't be here watching it for free. What else do I got here? Um, blah, blah. you already talked you had put up a video today about Marvel's executive saying that yes. uh, diversity may have alienated readers Um, really it was just his way of blaming us for all of Marvel's problems and not you know maybe thinking they're doing something wrong and I, I want to just clarify the fact that they're diversifying their lineup and adding like char- characters of different colors and races and backgrounds and genders and, and sexual orientation stuff that's not the problem and even, like, their way of implementing it wasn't so much the problem. It's everything else that they do. The right. constant events every other month. The fact that their books are ridiculously expensive sometimes. They're more expensive than everyone else on the market. The fact that series don't last very long. They'll, they'll last 12 issues if you're lucky, 24 if you're, you know, Mark Wade or Brian Bendis. The fact that people are leaving marvel in droves to go work at image or other publishers you know it's all all these little things add up and the one thing that they're focusing on is the diversity issue which isn't really the issue i mean yes it is a problem you you pretty much got rid of all your classic characters the characters we were reading your books for but well if we're going to talk about that uh, I had read a very interesting Reddit comment about it that I would like to bring up. Okay. While I bring it up, if you're capable of listening... To- oh, wait. Did I just delete it? Fuck. <laughs> Come back. Come back. Oh, it was such a good Reddit comment. Oh, I still have it. I don't know if I'll be able to bring it up on screen, though. Yes. Okay, I can, I can bring it up on screen. So, Will, while I bring it up on screen, mm-hmm. I need you to do me a favor. What's that? I need you to take that camera and put it back to 720. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. we're having problems. <laughs> I'm getting close. Ooh. Uh, so. If you guys are wearing 3D glasses, it looks like I'm poking you. <laughs> so, my feed might get weird in a second. Marvel Exec says emphasis on diversity may have alienated readers. That is the Reddit uh, title of the Reddit All post. Right. Back in 720. The comment says, this is going to get a bit personal. 
because this has been pissing me off. But I highly doubt people are alienated by diversity. But I can see how slash why they'd be irritated with the way Marvel is going about it. Growing up, I read a lot of black superhero comics. Power Man, Black Panther, and Blade to name a few. They were all heroes in their own ways. And dealt with typical hero stuff, but also things that were unique to being a minority. Which is why I was able to properly relate to them. But my wife and I have been having a growing beef with Marvel because their latest efforts haven't been ab about actual diversity. They've just been using a sort of pseudo tokenism to seem diverse, shoehorning in races and genders where they please. Instead of crafting unique female slash minority characters, they create these weird offshoots like Ironheart or Femthor. And then when they do this, f the characters usually end up being perfect, ironic, end up being perfect. Ironically, making them unrelatable to the very people they were created for. I can't speak for all black people, but I can speak on a personal level when I say this. I don't want black iron woman, black cap, or some kind of black Peter Parker. Those are already established characters, and they should remain what they are. You know what I, you know what I want to see? More Luke Cage, T'Challa? T'Challa. T'Challa. Storm. Dr. Voodoo, Spectrum, Night Thrasher, Misty Knight, Gentle, or Isaiah Bradley, Patriot. Marvel has a wealth of minority heroes that they could shine a light on with new freaking stories. Instead of these annoying ass reboots nobody seems to want. Too long didn't read. Do diversity properly or not at all? Ignoring established minority characters to reboot while characters into minorities is effing stupid, lazy, and an insult to people who enjoy the classic envisioning of said white characters. That is from Le Vaudeville Villain on Reddit. I think that's very well said. He is right. I'm not going to say all because I actually do like um, the way Jane Foster Thor is handled um, and some of the other new characters. But the handling of others... Have not has not been very good. Riri Williams was introduced in May of last year, and almost immediately after, they said she's going to be your new Iron Man. And then less than a year, less than a year later, she was. Are they all right? Yes, I was just making sure everything's still right. in sync. Oh, but we're good. Everything's good. So I mean, it looks like that Marvel is listening. They're coming out with that. Ev that event, Generations in the Fall, which is looks like it's going to bring back the classic versions of all the characters, in addition to like keeping the modern versions of them. Right. So that's fine. It's the way, the fact that you know David Gabriel, the VP of Sales, said that the fans were not taking to it. He's putting the blame on us, kind of calling us bigots in a way, <laughs> when really like he's you know he's blaming everybody but themselves it's their right. fault they're they're in this mess i mean you look at what dc is doing you know the new 52 you know wasn't really this bastion of diversity and stuff you know even when they did the whole dcu initiative that was a little bit more diverse but that was really weird because everybody was different and they stopped and they thought about it and they realized they were getting too far away from why people read comics in the first place. So they did Rebirth and that was a rousing success. Everybody loves Rebirth. Nobody loves what Marvel's been doing these past three years. AJ says, yeah, just make new characters. Use classic characters to usher them in and then spin them off into their own thing. That's easier said than done. I there, are, there are ways to bring, like, bring in new versions of classic characters um, and have them work. Like right now, um, in Green Lantern, there's two Green Lantern books. There's Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, which is Gr Hal Jordan in space doing space stuff. Then there's Green Lanterns, and those are the two Earth Green Lanterns. And the two Earth Green Lanterns is a Latina woman named Jessica Cruz and a Muslim man named Simon Boz. And that book is really good. And those characters are really good. Because th that had been set up for like a few years before they officially got the Green Lantern moniker. Guy number 20 long time no see <laughs> says see bob's face that's a face of regret from opening amiibos <laughs> no. uh tevia says do you think marvel needs a reboot i when you say reboot 
I don't think they need like a grand wide continuity reset like DC likes to do. Jason Todd says no more reboots. <laughs> I think what Marvel needs to just do is stop, take a step back, and sort of like recalibrate things. You know, there there are easy ways to fix all of their problems without doing major crossovers or events or things like that. It's just, you know, calm down, take a deep breath, and go back to basics. That that's right. that's all that needs to get done. Uh, and I'm ooh. beginning to think Dan Slott like needs to go on Spider Man. Like, yeah, he, I mean we've known that. Well, he's been <laughs> for on, like two years. We've he's been, been on, that. he's been on the book for like almost a decade. And the other week when he like started yelling at fans for wanting Peter and Mary Jane to get back together, like that's part of the problem right there. <laughs> Uh, Ignite Vigilante says Marvel needs to set a plan in order to succeed. I feel like they don't have proper plans. I feel like they just don't care about their comics division. They really don't. Yeah, they're just it's not their priority, which I understand yeah. why. I, I I started to get like this conspiracy theory vibe um not too long ago. Actually when I was writing that video, because all the characters that like were changed, Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, um, those are all uh Marvel movie characters. But Daredevil, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., those are all Marvel TV. And Marvel TV and Marvel Comics are under the same division, but Marvel Films isn't. Marvel Films oh. is a separate Disney entity. So part of me is like, maybe this is their way of getting back at Marvel Films. It's probably not. I'm probably wrong. No, don't, I mean, don't I, quote that. I, I believe it. I, I totally this believe is, that. This isn't like an X-Men and human thing. That's true. That's What's 100%. that? What's that? I did a video. Oh, already. Inhumans. Yeah. X-Men Inhumans. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, while we're on the topic of Marvel, mm -hmm. Marvel says PS4 exclusive Spider-Man game releasing in 2017. Yeah, it's not happening. Uh, I I think it's totally happening. I think it's happening right around the time when the When did they announce that game? Like last year, two years ago? Mm, last year. Was it really like I, last year? I think so. Oh, wow. Look it up. Look it up. Uh, see if there's a Wikipedia. Uh, let's read the story from GameSpot. Uh, Insomniac Games, PlayStation 4 exclusive Spider-Man. This is not a long article. Uh, the title will be released in 2017. According to Ryan Penagos, vice president and executive editor of Marvel Digital Media. In a live stream, which was captured by Reddit user Gaming Since 95. Gaming for longer than that. <laughs> Penagos was talking about Marvel's recent video game output and said there is even more on the horizon for 2017 like Spider-Man coming to PlayStation 4 and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite coming to Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Spider-Man PS4 was announced, yeah, June 13th last year. Wow. Insomniac Spider-Man title was announced during E3 2016, <laughs> but as of yet, Insomniac, Sony, and Marvel have not officially announced a release date for the game. I said over and over again that they're going to try to release this thing when the movie comes out. Marvel Studios and Sony Pictures have partnered for Spider-Man Homecoming, a new movie which is set to hit cinemas in July. Insomniac's game, game isn't tied into this movie, but would no doubt benefit from being released this year. However, as previously stated, an official release date has not yet been specified for the game. Spider-Man the Game casts players as the iconic web slinger in a completely original story. It takes place at a time when Peter Parker is experienced and more masterful at fighting crime <laughs> in New York. From traveling with parkour and utilizing the environment to new combat and blockbuster pieces, set pieces... It's Spider-Man unlike any you've played before. It reads a line from the game's description. Spider-Man, which is a working title for the PlayStation 4 game, is the first licensed game Insomniac has ever made. It wow. is known most for the Ratchet and Clank series. Now, there's an update to this article okay. that says, Insomniac Games, developer of the upcoming Spider-Man title, has responded to the rumor by stating, no release time frame has been announced. And that's all they said. In, t in a tweet to somebody else named Spidey889. Um, so I think they're leaving themselves open. Right. However, I think that they definitely have a lot of pressure to release it close to the movie. According, in tw according to the Wikipedia page, in 2014, Marvel Games approached Sony Interactive wanting them to publish a Spider-Man game and to treat it like a first-party Sony uh, title. 
the game will be the first licensed game developed by Insomniac Games after 22 years, blah, 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 blah. So if they approached Mar- uh, if Marvel approached Sony in 2014, they announced in 2016, comes out in 2017, that's a good, you know, three years-ish, three, four years-ish to get this, which is, you know, the right amount of time yeah. to develop a big AAA game. So... I'm wondering if am I, do I get low? Does my volume get low when I turn to Will? I feel like I feel like it, it probably does. You, you, maybe we should get uh, those mics that like you know uh, like flesh colored. Oh, like the the um, Broadway actors you have. Yeah, mine would have to be two tone. It have to be like yeah. half beard colored and then half. You can get them now. I've seen this. Um, they like come down from here. And like it's just a oh. little black dot right here, it kind of blends in with your hair. You know what Adam Savage does? He has a tested video about it. Yeah. Because he has that show with uh, Vsauce Michael. Yeah. That, yeah like yeah. a traveling show. What he does, and then he did it to Vsauce's glasses. He has he puts the the body mic in the glasses. Oh, that's smart. So it's it's drilled into the inside <laughs> of the arm. Wow. Yeah. So, you gotta start wearing glasses. Yeah, I gotta start wearing glasses. Huh. <sighs> Tevia says, hopefully this Spider-Man is good. I assume he's talking about the game? Yeah. Oh, I'm assuming too. The Spider-Man is part of a whole, like, new Marvel initiative to, like, put out good games. Because there's also that, um, that Square Enix game, the Avengers game, that's being made by the people who make Tomb Raider. That'd be cool. That would be, that's gonna be really good. We have Guardians of the Galaxy from Telltale. The people who currently make Tomb Raider? Yeah, Crystal Dynamics. Damn. Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal. In fact, Eidos Montreal makes Deus Ex... They said Deus Ex is on hold until we get this uh, Avengers game out the door. Uh, I just saw somebody here. And Telltale's uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is coming out this year. Mikachu says, if the new Spider-Man games has webs sticking to the air, I'm done with Spider-Man games forever. It definitely will not. No. I would bet a lot of money that it does not have that. No, they're probably, they're probably going to have webs sticking to buildings. Nador says, Jack and Dexter greater than Ratchet and Clank. Well, that's... Two different companies, right? Yeah, Jack and Daxter is that Naughty was Dog. Naughty Dog, yeah. Which you'll never see ever again. You will never see oh, I don't know. Jack and Daxter ever again. <laughs> I don't know, because Insomniac also made... Um... No, sorry, I'm thinking of a different... So I'm thinking of Sucker Punch. Because so Sucker Punch made um, Sly Cooper, then they went and did Infamous, mm. and then uh, someone else came in and did Sly Cooper 4. Sly Cooper 4 is awesome. So. I haven't played any Sly Cooper games. I've only played Sly Cooper 4, and I'm like, this is really good. I don't know if you met me, but I don't play video games. No. Uh, so that's that with Marvel. Got all that stuff. Yeah. So you don't think Spider-Man's coming out this year? I don't I don't know. I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't, but we'll see. So this article's from April 3rd. Okay. Um, it is about the Scorpio leaks. Okay. So we think that uh, we're going to get some Scorpio news this week, like specs. They said probably before Saturday. Okay. So it's from uh, BGR. Boy Gamer Review. What is it? Boy know. Genius. And then I don't know what R is. <laughs> Somebody tell me what that is in the chat. <laughs> Xbox Project Scorpio details and specs rumored to be unveiled this week. Uh, ever since Sony launched the PlayStation 4 Pro last November, we've been anxiously awaiting Microsoft's response. During its press event at E3 2016, Microsoft announced Project Scorpio, a 4K VR-capable console that would blow the competition out of the water. Since that announcement last summer, the company has been all but silent on the upgraded hardware, but that might finally change this week. According to Windows Central... A major gaming outlet, why is that in quotes, visited Microsoft HQ recently to learn about the final final specs of the console in preparation for, quote, a planned exclusive blowout. Why did a video just ruin what I was reading? A planned exclusive blowout of coverage. In order to demonstrate the power of Project Scorpio, Microsoft showed off Forza Motorsport 7, which reportedly runs in 4K and will likely release shortly before or on the same day as the Project Scorpio console itself. Of course, showing a racing game is the easiest way. I can't believe they're up to 7. Yeah, no, that's insane. That's the easiest way to show the graphics because there's no actual people. That's how they showed (laughs) off um, 
the HDR of the One S was with Forza Horizon. That's how they 3. showed the Xbox One. They yeah. released it with Forza. Windows Central couldn't nail down exactly when this coverage blowout would begin, but expect to learn more about the new Xbox One sometime this week. Thursday might be the day to keep your eyes peeled. That's tomorrow, as of the time <gasps> of this recording. Actually, I saw a tweet that said it, might, it probably is tomorrow. So, while we won't know the full specs of Project Scorpio until official coverage hits the internet or leaks early, we do know a few things about the power of the 4K console. For example, we know it will run at six teraflops. Yeah, they drilled that into our That's head. so many teraflops, yeah. Will. It's a lot, a lot can of you flopping. Believe, can you believe that? It's a lot of terrible flopping. <laughs> it will feature 12 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, and that, much like the PS4 Pro, it won't feature any exclusive games. Which is interesting because we also heard rumors that it was going to be a completely separate console. I think they're treating it as such because mm. the Xbox One, when it originally came out, wasn't easy to develop for. It wasn't as easy to develop for as the PS4 was. They had to slowly change it over time with firmware. It, that updates. was because mostly because of the ES RAM, and I think in this they completely got rid of ES RAM. Yeah. If you don't know, ES RAM is like a special type of RAM that they wanted to put most all the all the game assets you need to quickly get to like uh the main character's avatar mm -hmm. or like weapons that you use a lot those would be held in es ram but developers would have to put it it would have to code that specifically and the only games that utilized it were xbox exclusive games because right. that's a pain in the ass <sighs> Any game that runs on Project Scorpio will also run on an Xbox One or Xbox One S, which they kind of went back and forth on. I remember them saying like it was, and then some people yeah. said it wouldn't. Windows Central also claims that the Scorpio will have a more compact design than one might expect from a super-powered video game console, which is very good because the Xbox One is huge. Yes, it is. This is apparently due to advances in cooling technology. Scorpio will also apparently ditch the power brick awesome which was one of the more disappointing aspects of the original xbox one yeah and I, the xbox 360 yeah the xbox one s does not have a power brick my xbox one i have the older model has a power brick it takes up a lot of room back there i'm afraid it's gonna melt from the fans it of gets the, hot yeah after nearly a year of waiting it looks like project scorpio news is right around the corner now there was more news today hold on mm -hmm. xbox project scorpio they said, somebody came out and said something today. Uh, one day ago, one day ago. 47 minutes ago from Daily Express, whatever website this is. Witcher 3, Call of Duty, World War 2, and Red Dead Redemption. Oh, there's rumors that uh, they're going to show off Red Dead Redemption 2 Ooh. on it. Ooh, that'll be nice. That'll be, that'll be real nice. Very nice. So from this random-ass website, <laughs> express.co, but it just said Daily Express. Oh, it's got all those. Oh, that just shows a girl with her boobs in her hands. Nice. Um, Xbox Scorpio news this week includes The Witcher 3 being linked alongside Call of Duty World War, uh, World War II and Red Dead Redemption 2 as one of the planned 4K compatible titles. Reports that indicate that what I just said. However, another title has been added to the list. Blah, blah, Witcher 3. Blah, blah, blah. The team at Windows Central have said that the popular CD Projekt Red title may be another high-profile game being added to the 4K list in the future, although at the moment it is only being treated as a rumor. That would make sense because it is primarily a PC game. Yes. So making Wait, that 4K... Red Dead? No, uh, Witcher 3. Okay, yeah. So that would be, I would assume, easy to do on the right. Xbox. Did they patch that for PS4 Pro, Witcher 3? I don't know. I'll look that up. I'm wondering if they're going to do the same thing on uh, Scorpio that they did with PS4 Pro where all the games will get patched for 4K. Here's the thing. I don't see it here, but somebody said... What's... Let me read these quotes here. To clear up speculation, Digital Foundry will have an exclusive Xbox Scorpio reveal on Eurogamer. Okay. Uh, our list comes from marketing materials that include titles Microsoft wants to use to exemplify Project Scorpio 6 teraflops, true 4K capabilities, Windows Central reveals. Somebody came out and said that um, they were expecting to have 
a lot of games that were going to be upgraded to run in 4K on right. on the 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 uh, Scorpio. Mm-hmm. I think it was Shinobi, the 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 guy on Twitter who's like a industry yeah. insider. He said that he's going to use this for his multi platform games because this is like his daily driver for the multi platform stuff right. because uh, you know it'll be really powerful. They're they're marketing the Scorpio to high end uh, console gamers. Yeah. But like, this this is the same problem with the PlayStation Four Pro. Yeah. Like that, those people don't really exist. If they did, they would have a PC. And the games that are upgraded for 4K on the PS4 Pro, especially in the multi-platform ones, yeah. they run like garbage. I remember Phil Spencer was on an episode of IGN Unlocked uh, a month or two ago, and he, he talked about this like exact problem. You know, Because they keep saying that the Xbox Scorpio is going to be a premium console. And what he means by that is it's, it's not for... You know, the average, like you said, it's not for the average person. It's for, like, the person who wants, like, the best technology. you got to have the latest gadget. The person who, like, pays attention to tech trends and things like that and has the money to burn right. for things like this. Whereas, you know, your average mom and dad is just going to get an Xbox One S or something like that. Right, right, right. So, yeah, they, they said they expect to sell a lot more Xbox One S's, especially during, like, the holiday yeah. season, than... Uh, Scorpio. So yeah. I would assume that Scorpios are going to be hard to find, and they're probably not going to manufacture that many. Of yeah, them. I'm. I'm taking this to be like the difference between an iPad and an iPad Pro. Right. You know, I just don't know if, in video game terms, it's going to equal the same thing. Well, because not everybody has an iPad Pro, but everybody has an iPad. The tablet space right now. Yeah. You know, like because because you have your phone mm-hmm. and you have laptops or computers or whatever. Who is the iPad for? You know, like our parents are a good example, right. but their tablet sales have been down recently because right. they can't find those people. Well, tablet sales, I feel like are down because people don't upgrade their tablets as often as they do. That's true too. That's a good point. Uh, Sheldon asks, why isn't Wolf reading comments? Well, there you go. Sorry. <laughs> what we do is we tell a story. Mm-hmm. We tell our opinions on the story. And then we go to the chat. And then we go into the chat, so why don't you hold your horses there? Uh, now we have a lot to read. <laughs> Tevye says, is Project Scorpio a new console or not? I'm asking the same question. It looks like it's probably not a new console. Yeah, I didn't think it would be. I really don't like this whole iterative stuff. Neither do I. It's going to make games run bad. I don't know if it's going to make games run bad. Bad, I think it's going to lead to a bad trend. Yes. Of like, that's every, fine. every two years, I got to get a new Xbox. You know, I, I don't want that. Well, that's the thing. Like, these games, like, so they don't want to make it so that developers will develop for one console or the other. Right. But that's going to happen anyway. Developers are either going to focus on the 4K Scorpio. Yeah. Or, or well, and, and the Pro. Or they're going to focus on... The regular mainline consoles. And if most people are going to have the regular old vanilla consoles, they're going to develop for those. Right. So the 4K st- business is not going to be the focus. Right. Unless you're somebody like CD Projekt Red who's making the games for PC first. Yeah. Which isn't the case for a lot of multi-platform game developers right now. Mm-hmm. Multi-platform game developers are these days are focusing on consoles and they're going to focus on the low-end vanilla consoles. Right. My opinion. I mean, I know because at least with Apple, they, you know, everything's running iOS. Everything's, you know, there's certain um, lines and guidelines that they have to adhere to. um, And they have to work for X amount of devices. They have to. No questions asked. So I'm assuming Microsoft and Sony are going to implement, like, similar strategies um, to their, you know, to their new iterative console ideas. The, The problem is, you know, how far do they go until... They say, you know, okay, if you have a launch Xbox One, you can no longer play, like, games X, Y, and Z. Yeah, that's going to be a huge problem. That's going to be a big problem. I don't, I, I don't think they would do that. No? Especially if, if they're saying that, um, if they're saying that they're not going to do that. Right. Like, uh, we have to wait and see tomorrow, I guess. They'll announce it, and then, and then we'll, we'll get more insight, because right now it's all rumors. Yeah. However, if you remember the 3DS... 
then they made the, the new, 3DS. new 3DS. The new 3DS plays all the same games. It plays them fine, you yeah. can play them on the old 3DS and the new 3DS, whatever. Some games ran better on the new 3DS. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X only ran on the new 3DS. Right. And I think um, Hyrule Warriors Legends ran like garbage on an original 3DS. Right. Smash so. Brothers was hard to see on an yeah. original 3DS. So that's like an omen we're gonna yeah. we're gonna that's what we're gonna that's what we can expect mm-hmm. i don't know if microsoft would would allow a game to only run on the scorpio but it's possible yeah so, maybe not initially no it took a while it took like a year yeah for nintendo to do that i don't i, don't, I, don't, I mean i'll probably take microsoft longer than that to you know say like okay if you want to make a game just for Scorpio, you can make a game just for Scorpio. Sheldon, I'm timing you out because you keep yelling in all caps. <laughs> uh, but you did say something that I want to try to read. Uh, what missing. are your favorite FPS games? And also, he said something else, but it was like really... He like yelled about FPS. Why FPS based on old times is supposedly better than future gen? Please answer. Now that makes sense. Now that you said FPS games because it's first person shooters. Right. So he's asking why first person shooters based on old times is better than future gen. It's not. It's not. It's it's. We talked about this last week. Mm-hmm. We talked about how um, it's it was just World War Two was overplayed. Yeah. And now future is overplayed. Yeah. So they want to go back to the old times. Right. That's really that's, the only That's reason. what it is. Also it's, because Call of Duty used jetpacks and running on walls too much. Yeah. And they need to stop doing that. The, the whole thing is that, you know, it's just, it's different. It's exciting. It's a breath of fresh air in a sea of, like, everything being the same. That's what it is. So it was it was fun to, you know, not have jetpacks and to run around in trenches and, you know, fight on a Zeppelin as opposed to robots and all that nonsense richard powell says do you guys think sony and microsoft move back to cartridges like nintendo has? No, no no if anything the all digital yeah eventually everything will be all digital that's what i think yeah uh, i'd also like to thank mohammed for donating 20 dollars, which he did i don't remember one <laughs> i just keep leaving that there he always does like off stream so i don't i just feel weird about <laughs> not, not bringing it up uh guys now is the time where unless you have another story well i think that's um uh, i have one about bioware and mass effect but i don't it's not really important i have one about activision notes. looking to create a marvel style cinematic universe for call of duty no but that's just you yeah, know that's that's dumb, dumb and shut stupid. up for, for they want to make movies yeah no they want to make they don't want to make movies they want to make a cinematic universe. Because everybody does. Yeah. Because you have to make a good movie first. Make the movie good and then maybe think about making a cinematic The problem universe. is I've already seen like the best Call of Duty movies. They're called Saving Private Ryan and Black Hawk Down and Zero Dark Thirty and all of those. And there's no way in hell Call of Duty is going to be better than any of those because the Call of Duty games are all dumb. Rogue One, I would argue. That was like Infinite Warfare, I guess. Uh, maybe it's more like a Battlefield movie. Maybe. I just, I, I gotta watch that. I bought it on Blu-ray. Yo, it is. That is one of my favorite Star Wars movies. I bought... I, the, up up there in, like, the top yeah, three. Maybe. I got the Target exclusive version because it came with an extra disc of, like, bonus content. But it also came with the 3D Blu-ray version. Oh. We don't own a 3D TV. No, we definitely don't. And I don't think Rogue One was filmed in 3D. So That's probably gonna be crap. Yeah. Guys, leave your questions, comments in the chat. Or if you're not here in the chat with us, you're watching it afterwards. Hello. Thank you for being here. Um, you can leave a comment on this YouTube video, or you can ha- use the hashtag Wolfden Live, and we will get to it next week. Yes. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's... Going to last week's video. How about going to the hashtag Wolfden Live? How about that? All right, you, go, you do that. I'll be on last week's video. Uh, six days ago. Does, does that mean last week? Yes. So, Michael Jackson. Oh, so so glad to be in your presence. <laughs> Saw a review of the Ghost in the Shell 15 minute preview. Sounds like it's going to be super dumbed down movie with bad acting. Is it per- out yet? Apparently it was. Yeah, it's out. Oh. I was this close to going to see it. I really it. do want to see and it. I, and I apparently I'm just like, no. I saw, Power, pro- I saw Power Rangers instead. It's probably really pretty. 
Samoan Stig, which thank you very much for taking our couch. Yes. He has our couch. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> if historically consoles manufacturers take a loss or don't make much on the console and still make money long term, why do they have a high markup on their consoles? They don't. If you want four people to play a game at once, you shouldn't have to spend $200 on three extra controllers Ah, for your friends. Everyone had four controllers for the N64 when we were kids. So, oh, controller. Okay, he said, why is there a high markup on controllers? I I thought you said consoles. I'm sorry. Everyone, I mean, yeah, everyone did have... uh, at least at least two controllers for their N64. Some people I knew a lot of people who had three controllers for their N64. At that point, I'm just like, get an extra controller or, or GCFO. I'm looking up how much it costs to actually manufacture a control a, a DualShock Four. I, I I heard apparently it cost Nintendo two hundred fifty dollars to make a Switch. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Two hundred fifty seven. Yeah. I remember. They historically. Uh, make a profit on all their consoles. Right. So they're, they're the only ones yeah. who try to make a profit. Right. I think the Wii U is their only console that they didn't make a profit on. PlayStation 4 costs Sony $381 to make, which is insane because now you can get one for like 250 Yeah. Uh, blah, blah. Yeah, what about the controller? How much does it take to make the controller? I guess part of that is the controller. Maybe. You know? Uh, optical drive costs two twenty eight dollars. Controller also has the DualShock Four controller. It costs Sony eighteen dollars to build. Wait, say that again. IHS also said the DualShock Four controller costs Sony eighteen dollars to build and includes a motion sensor chip from Bosk, Qualcomm Bluetooth chips, and an audio chip from Wolfson Microelectronics. It costs them $18 to make, and they have the nerve to charge $60. Since Sony takes a cut on PS4, it makes up for it with DualShock 4, costing $60 and sold separately. Oh, you you make up for it, all right. Oh, my (laughs) God. Now I am pissed off. Oh, I am so mad. That that it's gotta that be some, hurts. It's got to be somewhere for Microsoft then. Yeah, and pro- yeah. Oh my God, I am, I have never been angrier at anything in my life. Uh, and Nintendo I'm wearing a Batman vs Superman hat. Switch Pro controller, uh, manufacturer. Oh my God, that cost. is that is evil. That is evil right there. Do you people re- understand this? Oh, I'm really curious about the Pro controller now. Yeah, I, I can't find a, like, a tear down of that. $40 would have been acceptable because that's double the manufacturing cost. You could still make a decent profit off of that. You're charging three times the amount. Nador says, chill. It's called profit. <laughs> now, here's the thing. They could have done that at $40. Yes, absolutely. Or $50. $50 it's, would be acceptable it's for me. It. But that would still be better than sixty dollars. Yeah. Yep. Eighteen dollars is eighteen dollars. Ridiculous. That is. I mean, of course, there's other costs that go into it. Uh-huh. It's not just the hardware. It's it's the it's the research and development. It's the uh you know the the the, the people who stock them need to take a cut and no, all that the people stuff. People stock them need to take a cut. But, you know, going over six, like we said last week or the week before that. A lot of console manufacturers are are selling them for more than sixty dollars. Like you can get a PS4 controller that's colored for sixty five dollars, yeah. which is ridiculous. Those people can go to hell. It cost the Xbox One S. Uh, it cost the Xbox One uh, controller a hundred million dollars to develop. Well, there you go. That means is just stupid. They need some profit. Stupid amount of money. That's Microsoft money for you. Uh, Nador also says, you guys know how much it costs Apple to make an iPhone compared to what they sell? Yeah, I know it's a lot. Yeah. It is a lot. These things cost way too much damn money. They really do. All right, next. Uh, Fred asks, preferred Pringles flavor? I like barbecue. Oh, what did I have the other day? I had one that was like amazing. It was like cheese something. I don't know. There's like they a make a pizza one there. that's pretty good. Pizza's good. Pizza's good. I I like barbecue sauce. I like barbecue anything. Pringles cheese. 
I think it was just stacked cheddar. Okay, it sounds simple enough. And it, it was awesome. Also, yes, please, our P.O. box is in the description. Send us consumables. <laughs> like barbecued Pringles. Uh, MDB says, I keep missing Wolf Den Live because I'm awful busy, but you don't have to. You don't have to. Tune in. Oh, thank you, MDB. You're in here in spirit. Always. Congratulations on your new apartment and getting out of that crap hole you were in. <laughs> uh, oh, do you have the comments from last week? I, yes, I, I do. I didn't bring that up. For uh, the God of Destruction says, hi, I love you, Hart. Oh, we love we you love too, too, even though we don't know you. Yeah. <laughs> um, DJ Will 410, I think Carnage should finally be put into a Spider Man cinematic universe. Um, you can't do Carnage without Ven- doing Venom first. And again, Venom does not work on his own. It takes too long to get to Venom, is it the t- problem. It takes too long to get to Venom, and then it takes even longer to get to Carnage. Yeah. So, it, I mean, it, you're going to be waiting a while. MDB says, ouch, I cringed watching that Destiny trailer. I love that Destiny I trailer. Didn't, I didn't see the Destiny trailer. Now, I, I showed you last week. I almost, then they had an official trailer. Oh, I yeah. didn't see that. It wasn't as good. Actually, yeah. Because it, it. it had his dynamic compared to everybody else. That's So there's three classes. Yeah. There's the Titan, the Hunter, and the Warlock. Um, the, 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 the three vanguards were in it. The only ones who talked were the Titan and the, then the Hunter vanguards. Uh-huh. There's a meta beef between the Titans and the world, uh, the, the Hunters. Mm-hmm. Like people who play as Titans hate Hunters and people who play as Hunters hate Titans. And people who play as Warlocks hate Titans too. So it's like the Pokemon Go clubs. Yes. So in this trailer, you see the Titan Vanguard giving like a like a rally speech, mm-hmm. and you see the Hunter Vanguard giving a rally speech. That's Nathan Fillion, right? The Hunter Vanguard has the Warlock Vanguard behind him, because not a lot of people played as Warlock, so right. I guess they just didn't care to include her. It looks like they split, kind of, which would be awesome if there was like a there was a meta beef yeah. in game between the the Titans and and the Hunters and the Warlocks. That would be awesome the problem that i have with that though is that um most people play as hunters so it is a little weird to add the warlocks to them they're probably going to do some things like make each class you know different now that would be sick because so here's the thing with with why titans suck in destiny (laughs) because they they have this thing called shoulder charge and it's way overpowered it's like the stab in call of duty you know it's like a one-shot kill the shoulder charge can do that. Also, the shotguns are really powerful. So right. what people do is they shoulder charge shotgun or they shotgun shoulder charge and they slide sh- uh, shotgun and it just tightens. There are these big buff dudes who are really powerful at melee who are really light on their feet for some reason. They should not be that light on their feet. And they just run around and they shoulder charge. Really annoying. And titans hate hunters because they have the blade dance and the blade dance makes them really agile and they just mm-hmm. go in and tear people up. Anyway... Keck Chan says, I don't think they had a direct on April 1st last year. Yes, they did. They didn't have one this year. But they did have one on in 2015. Oh, maybe I lied. Uh, yep. Jason Todd says, Will, Bob, just say Sanji is way cooler than Zoro. No. Shut up. Nobody's cooler than Zoro. I'm assuming, of course, you're referring to the Mexican folklore Zoro, not any other Zoro that I'm aware of. I like the way... Do me a favor. Google image search Zoro right now. Everybody at home, do it too. Look what comes up. All anime. (laughs) You know why? Because I think the Mexican Zoro has two R's. Really? Yeah. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, now we're now we're up to date. Okay. All right, so now we go to the current chat. Oh, guys, let me show you something. This gotta, is, gotta well, set, set the mood. Welcome to the welcome to the fuck den, Will. <laughs> <laughs> why why do you, why did you do that? I right. like giving you work to do. <laughs> Such an now ass. he has to bleep that out on the podcast. Now I got four bleeps I gotta do. Look at that though. I mean, what's the real like? What gets the juices flowing? Is it red? Or is it? Yeah, no. It's, is it's, it green? It's red. No, green makes me want to save the planet. <laughs> I like white. I like yellow. This is the bookshelf color, by the mm-hmm. way. If you're a podcast listener, orange is cool. 
these are two separate units though, so they get like out of sync. But uh, no, I just leave it away. Little little mood lights for you. Well, those came today. I put them in right before the podcast. Thanks. Uh, blah 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 blah. blah. I'm try- I always I've been trying to make a conscious effort to look for people who I don't normally right. call out and chat. Uh, I did see Tevia asked if I have any opinion on the Teen Titans Judas contract. Uh, looks good. I'm going to check that out. It's interesting because they've been doing some weird things with their continuity in their animated movies. Um, this is something that should have been earlier in the timeline, but I'm interested and in, I'm interested to see how it plays out. Abdul says, "Holy ass word." This set is awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, guy, it's it'll be evolving a little bit. This will be a little easier to change up. Yeah. Uh, only slightly though. Like this picture, you can like barely see on camera. This is the Flash running. It's yeah. really cool if you could see it. <laughs> Uh, Richard Powell, do you think Sony and Microsoft will go back to car? Oh, I already read that. So and they definitely so won't. screw you. Big Game says DualShock Three controllers still cost sixty dollars. I'm pretty sure you can find those though for cheaper. Richard Powell says loaded baked potato is pretty great. That might be one of the ones. That it I sounds had, like that was good. Sounds like that. The really problem good. is, I think they add sour, like a sour cream flavor, and I'm not too fond of mm-hmm. that. Did you know, Will, that one of the hippest uh, brands, one of the, one of the one of the it's lit, one of the litest <laughs> brands, they did a little survey. Oh yeah. I think the number three was Oreo. That makes sense. Of all of the brands. No, they're pretty. They're I think pretty hip. two was Microsoft. I mean Xbox, Xbox, really? not Microsoft, Xbox. Yes. I forgot what number one was. Jeez. Nike know. was number nine. Really? I think, yeah. I don't know. Probably like Tamagotchi or whatever the kids are into. You know, it's days. not a hip brand. Pepsi. Did you see that commercial? Yeah, I didn't see the commercial, but I heard Man. about it. Man. All right. So I saw the commercial, like only heard a little bit of the contra- no, no, I, I think Steve, uh, Stephen Colbert tweeted something like snarky about it, but I, I watched because he linked to it and I was like, yeah. oh, is he getting paid by Pepsi? And I watched it. Why would they have protesters... Holding up blue, uh, blue, white, and red signs that were like vaguely looking like Pepsi logos. I don't know. Like, why would you do that? Why, why would they even think about having a commercial like that in the first place? Like, I don't know any of the other like, like, cultural like things that they did wrong. Apparently, something about white people. I don't know. <laughs> but man, do not act like people are protesting for your brand. Yeah, that that is with all of the stuff we've been through. Yeah, don't do that. Unless they did them. They probably did it on purpose. Also, no one... don't put... If you're going to do something like that, don't put a, a Kardashian in your commercial. That would be yeah. the, the instant way to get people not to take it I, seriously. Like I, saw, like, I saw one of the Kardashians, and I was like, oh, yeah, it's the Kardashian. And then, and then when I saw it in the news later, it was a different person who was the Kardashian <laughs> in the commercial. I was like, wait a second. Did I... Wait, were there two? I don't... I don't know. I don't know. Um... Convoy, can you get as much game onto a cartridge as on discs? No. Well, it would be a little more expensive. Yeah, I think because cartridges are like just basically chips on a circuit board. You can, you can get it. Theoretically, you can, it's, but it just might be more money. It's yeah, because it's not just the chips on the circuit board. And then they gotta make the plastic. Well, and... well, how much data fits into a Blu-ray disc? And well, what type of Blu-ray discs are PS4 discs? I think the regular Blu-ray discs, and I, th- uh, I think the average Blu-ray is 50 gigs for okay. a dual-layer Blu-ray. So the Nintendo Switch cartridges are 32 gigabytes, but they right. can go bigger than that. Right. But they're not going to because that costs more money. Yeah. So you can go bigger, but it would cost more money. So it's cheaper to, to do CDs, I guess. But eventually there will be none of that, and it'll all be digital downloads yes. anyway, which is the way to go. Except for mm-hmm. Nintendo, because they got some weird regulations. They got a lot of stupid w- regulations. Richard Powell says something about birthday cake Oreos. The definitive best Oreo is the Rice Krispie ones. Cinnamon bun. I'll allow it. <laughs> did you say something about Super Sons? Uh, I did not, but Tevia, I know, is asking about... Basically, he wants to know if um, the current Superboy, Jonathan Kent, will ever be in an animated movie. Maybe? They seem to be like trying to get through the new 52 storylines before they get to 
anything afterwards. So Slime Slasher says, clickbait! How about Slime Slasher rewinds to the beginning when we actually unboxed all these Amiibos? Yeah. <laughs> um, Aaron, uh, Bob, you hear about the Mass Effect patch? Yes, that was one of the stories. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to click on it right now. Yeah, just go through it. Because I actually didn't read it. I can't imagine they could fix the animation that much. You'd be surprised. I mean, I made do. a video about this, but I I do think that Mass Effect suffered from like a mob mentality. Because before the game even came out, before there was anything about this game, people were talking about the animation. Which, honestly, is only bad on a few characters. Right. And Mass Effect 3 had it worse, I think, where the run cycle for the female uh, Femship. Femship was awful. Was absolutely terrible. And you have to watch that the whole game when you're yeah. running. That's bad. The Femship, uh, the Fem Rider, in the new Mass Effect, her face is terrible. Yeah. The regular male dude is fine. And uh, one other character has terrible facial animations. The story isn't that great, but the combat's awesome. So, I, I, I don't know. Real quick, Richard Powell says, If this was clickbait, where were the throngs of hundreds of angry douchebags like there were during the WrestleMania broadcast? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning into that and for um, staying through. Um, who did read the title of the video and realized it was just commentary. Yes. We do that so that we can leave them up so you can go back and watch it again listening to us. You're welcome. WrestleMania wasn't that great, by the way. <laughs> I actually saw it at Pacini's house. So yeah. Pacini's house had some, uh, he got some dominoes. Nice. It, that last match yeah. with Undertaker and Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns was yeah. awful. Yeah, it was really bad. That was one of the worst matches I've ever seen in it my life. It sucks because like four years ago or something, Undertaker had an awesome match with CM Punk at WrestleMania. Like yeah. It was incredible. And now it's it, it he's retired. Like nothing happened. There yeah. was like so such big spaces of nothing happening. Yeah, WrestleMania was not great. Well, anyway, here's the patch notes. The details were part of an official release from Aaron Flynn, Bioware's general manager. In it, Flynn thanked players before addressing the various areas of concern voiced by the same group. The release doesn't waste much time in terms of talking about the specifics, like this freaking article does. Of the game of the complaints and instead offers gamers a look at what they can expect later this week. Check out the list of fixes below, allowing you to skip ahead when traveling between planets in the galaxy map, which is awesome because there's a there's a weird cutscene. Mm -hmm. um, increasing the inventory limits, awesome because in my video I talk about how there's no uh, you can't be over encumbered and you absolutely can be over encumbered. Improving the appearance of eyes for humans and Asari characters. I think it's the Asari one character. He has like a like a Dragon Ball Z like visor, mm -hmm. and every time he blinks, the visor morphs. Nah. Like that's the blink animation is they <laughs> morph the face. It's it looks terrible. Um, decreasing the cost of remnant de decrypting keys. I don't care. Improving localized voice over limp lip sync. Okay. Uh, fixing riders' movements and running in a zigzag pattern. So this is interesting because while I was at the Mass Effect event playing the game, yeah. the guy next to me was like, hey, check this out. It's like one of the EA guys. And he did... He, he If you run back and forth really quick, like like a, AD, like uh -huh. really quick, they look bizarre. And I, I saw that and I was like, well, I mean, you're breaking the game. Like, that's funny yeah. looking, but like, you know, it's not their fault. You're breaking the game. Now they're fixing it. And I saw, I think PewDiePie in his video, he did that. He's like, oh, look at how stupid it looks. Like, you're doing that. Improving matchmaking and latency in multiplayer. I'm not even going to touch the multiplayer. In addition to the immediate issues being addressed, Flynn also pretended... Oh, my God, there's a full-page ad play. Yes. Uh, Flynn also presented a number of other changes that will be coming in future patches down the line. Though we will... They were less specific, blah, blah, blah. More options and variety in the character creator, which is good because the character creator sucks. Improvements to hair and general appearances for characters, which is awesome because the hair sucks. Because there's no diversity in long hair for males. I, I uh, put my foot down. Uh, and also, one of the guys I was with at the Mass Effect event was yelling about there's barely any hair for, for black males ever. 
Yeah. In in games. Uh, ongoing improvements to cinematic scenes and animations. Good. Improvements to male romance options for Scott Ryder. Nice. There's already... I mean, I thought you could pretty much have sex with anybody. Adjustments to conversations with Hamley Abrams. Wait, is that the one who has, like, the worst face? I'm going to Google that real quick. Probably. Um, Sheldon Cooper dropped a bombshell in the chat. He said, do you guys know that WWE is scripted? Holy God almighty. I had no idea. So, so does that mean that, like, Finn Balor isn't really a demon? So, like, is, is Randy Savage not really that macho? Like, I, I had no idea. Here, so, wait. Hanley Abrams is the, is the character, the only, she's a random character in the game. Yeah. She's transgender. Oh, I heard about this. So, the adjustments to the conversation with Hanley Abrams, we can only assume is that they're taking out the part where she says that her, uh, I forgot what they call it. She, she refers to her, she refers to herself by her pre-transition name. Yes. That's which isn't Hanley, it's something else. Yeah. Um, and transgender people hated that yeah. for some reason. Because, well, because they prefer to be called by their current name. I but... forgot what they, there's a word for that. And it's like really derogatory. But, but like, what if she's a transgender person that just doesn't care about that? Yeah. What if she's a transgender person who's open? I don't know. Like, who cares? Yeah. Why does it matter? And so now they have to change that because it upset people. Yeah. That's dumb. But I I understand they put that in the game just to represent transgender people. So if transgender people are upset, they have to change it, which is also stupid. Yeah. Like you're shoehorning in representation, similar to how Marvel does it. There you go. Uh, I like how Overwatch does it. They say uh, they they, they just kind of like like fling it at, yeah. at you. You know, like oh by the way, this character's autistic. By the way, tra- and you can't gag. even tell. Yeah. That you in the game there is nothing that says that. Yeah. I, I, uh, blah. I, I, what else do we, I think we're done. Uh, lock real quick, um, in the chat. Have you guys talked about the, uh, Invincible getting a uh, movie? Oh, yeah. So, Seth Rogen and his producing partner, Evan Goldberg, um, are going to make a movie about Robert Kirkman's other long running comic book series. It's actually ending soon. Uh, Invincible. Um, that'll be nice. It'll be nice to see it not be a TV show. Although it probably would make a better TV show because it's long running. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Invincible gets really gruesome at points, so I'm interested to see if they will ever, you know, get to that level. Make it a rated R. Yeah. You, you it it has it. I, I forgot. It might have been Rob Liefeld, actually. Um, because I think, I forgot the stu- I think, oh, Universal is optioning it. So, Li- Rob Liefeld tweeted, oh, Universal getting in on that sweet, sweet Deadpool money with a rated R superhero movie. <laughs> Did you see Greg Miller's freak out live when no. when, the, when that news went live? No. I just put it in the chat. You should open it in a new tab so you can watch it later. Mm-hmm. He freaks the hell out because he's been wanting an Invincible movie forever. Right. He, he like, casted it, like, a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, he, he said you better put Zac Efron, Efron yeah. as Invincible. And if Seth Rogen's tied to it, it's possible. Yeah. That. And Seth Rogen responded to his tweet, and he was like, oh, that, wow. was, that was awesome seeing that. And he said, we're not going to F you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, that's it. We're done. Yeah. Thank you for being here. We went a little long, but not yeah. longer, not as long as I expected. We need enough time to unbox the Amiibos. Yes. So next week, uh, I'm going to be unboxing some Switch accessories because I got a couple, and I didn't want to do it today. But uh, for some reason, like all of these like Japanese and Chinese manufacturers have been emailing me, I guess because of the videos. Yeah. And they're like, would you unbox, please? And then they send me a link. And I'm <laughs> like, okay, send me it. So we're going to have a whole bunch of Switch cases. This nice. comes in the wake of me already buying two Switch cases. I guess I'm going to have to get a Switch now. Just You're going to have to get it. like four. Yeah. <laughs> also, there'll be a giveaway next week. Yeah. We're giving away some of the accessories. Mm-hmm. Um, so thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for talking to us in the live chat. If you did not catch us live, then you can catch us on YouTube.com slash Wolfden or... If you prefer to listen to us and not see our stupid, ugly, hairy faces and hairy arms, hairy everything else, then you can listen to us in audio format on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. If you listen to us there, please be sure to rate us and review us because that helps us with placement on those respective stores. Guys, 
Thank you for this new set. Yes. Most of this was paid for with ad revenue. Yeah. All of our ad revenue, by the way, we don't have any more. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you for your support in just watching our videos. Yes. You don't have to actually give... You can super chat if you want. Yes. You can donate in the donate link in the description, but you don't have to. We will, All never, we ask, we will never tell you no. All we ask is that you watch the yes. video. That's more important than anything. Yes. And if you would like... You can follow us on Twitter. All the social media stuff in the description. Subscribe. Like. A like goes a long way. Yes. Especially on our old videos. Uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you. Are you going to be on Twitch? Oh, yes. Thank you, Will. Look at you. Well, uh, it's because everybody's asking. Fred, could that. you put the Twitch link? I am going to be on Twitch in like 10 minutes. Go there now and camp out. Fred is going to put the link in the, in, the, in the chat right now. Oh, and our P.O. box is in the description of this video. So it's brand new. Send us dumb stuff, and yeah. we'll open it live. Just don't send us anthrax, please. No, don't do that. Thank you very much. See you later. Goodbye. Bye.